Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your Vibe Mentor. Welcome to Monday Mastery. If you're new here, this is a timeless message. I'll take just a minute to cover a little bit of the astro weather as far as astrology or geomagnetics. And then from there, we'll dive into the timeless message, looking at guidance for how we move forward and what we are learning in this day and age. Not not too much to speak of relative to last week. As far as the solar weather, we did have a handful of M-class flares and 10 or more C-class flares just about every day this week. Of course, we had a full moon on Thursday, which was surprisingly exhausting. Um, Friday, we also got hit with an electromagnetic storm. Pardon me, my sticky note fell down. <laughs> Um, on Friday post the new moon, or I'm sorry, full moon. And so it was really interesting because usually the full moon will come with a lot of extra energy. And yet Friday, um, there were very high levels of lethargy and fatigue. And yet I will say, if you listened and you heeded the call for rest, boy, were there some amazing energetic downloads. I, you could just feel the body buzzing as it received that energy. Um, so I hope that you were able to take advantage of that and be part of um, the receptive family of that energy. Um, we also had another uh, KP storm, or I guess you could say it really was sustained through Friday and into Saturday. Um, and then the um, solar flares declined from there. We had two on Saturday, three on Sunday. Um, sorry, two M class on Saturday, not even an M class on Sunday or so far yet today. Um, so it was a, a fun week. Um, not too crazy. Uh, it made it seem like it was going to be worse when people talk about Mars and Pluto being involved in this full moon. Um, there was some definite activation, um, clear aggravation in, in some people out in the world. Um, and I would, I would chalk that up to the Mars Pluto, um, activation with the full moon. Um, there was, um, some issues brought to light, right? Sometimes you'll notice that the energies tend to sort of push our buttons to get us to see what's living in our subconscious and what needs to be addressed. Um, it, it will push those issues to the limit so that you hit that I'm done moment, that I'm done moment. The breaking point is actually an excellent place to be. Ideally, you don't have to be pushed to that place, but if you're not addressing things, that is how it will be um, forced to resolution, if you will. So the beauty in this is whatever was brought to light, if you're willing to address it and to do the work to shift it, then you are moving closer to the limitlessness that you are made to live in. And it's, it's beautiful how this work helps you see where you are not free. Where are you blocked? Where are there things that are living with you? Uh, within you or even um, environments outside of you that need to be addressed that you are you're not facing right so it brings these issues to light and it helps us heal through awareness as you know the the darkness has to flee when we shine the light of awareness on something so while it can be uncomfortable sometimes it's also very helpful Remember that shame thrives in the darkness of secrets, right? So if you can think of our, our conscious awareness as the light that we shine on something um, that helps it dissipate or heal or leave our lives, the opposite is also true. If you are not paying attention, you're not willing to look at it, you're keeping it in the darkness. And that is where issues will fester. That's where they grow. That's where they become these monsters that seem impossible to face, right? So we dissolve issue in the light of awareness. And of course, with that awareness can come love and compassion and all sorts of um, beautiful healing that is only available to you if you're willing to look at it, right? So we really have to remember that the thing we fear facing, the thing that seems um, too big to face or too big to deal with or too big to overcome is actually not as big as you think it is. Uh, fear is never real. Feel, fear is only helpful if you're standing on the edge of a cliff and it tells you to take a step back. But even then you still have to look at the thing or you have to find a way to move through or around the thing. So that fear is, is not meant to um, lock things in place like it does for many people in today's eight, day and age. It is uh, the fear of addressing something. When we look away from something, we move away from something and we don't shine the light of awareness and love and compassion on it, that we lock it in place and we hold it in place, right? The real issue is the way that we are abandoning ourselves when we are looking away. We are 
foregoing our relationship with ourself that is required to become limitless, to, to fully self-actualize, to be all that we were made to be requires being willing to see within and, and look at those parts that are afraid and why they're afraid and what, what belief they hold and what needs to be addressed or worked through. The real issue, I want to say that again, because it's so important. The real issue is the way that we abandon ourselves by looking away. Now, there's something really profoundly powerful and healing ab about, <laughs> it's interesting, I'm not sure where I paused there, uh, garbage truck outside, hopefully you can't hear that. Um, it's when you bring your awareness internally and you see yourself, you see your parts, you have compassion and love for yourself, you hold your heart and you say, you know what, you did good, right? There's, there's profound, powerful healing in just bringing your awareness within. And with that awareness, again, comes, comes the love and compassion. And so when we are looking away from something, we are suppressing how we're feeling, we're ignoring those parts, we're beating on ourselves, we're abandoning ourselves, we're actually causing further wounding and holding ourselves stuck in this locked place of um, immovable um, energies and um, blocks issues that will cause us to stay stuck, right? So we have to remember and really get intimate with how do we speak to ourselves? How do you feel towards yourself? I've There's times where I've noticed, you know, we'll talk about self-talk and what do you say to yourself when you talk to yourself? Certainly the words that you are using, whether they're spoken word or they're just in your head is very important, but also how do you feel towards yourself? Sometimes there's just not words, but there can be, if you're unconscious, um, to the 80,000 thoughts that you have a day, 90 of which are repeated and 70% of which are negative. If you are not conscious to those things, you are creating a lot of negativity in your life, a lot of problem, a lot of blocks, a lot of stuckness. Um, but when we bring the light of awareness and love and compassion inwardly towards ourselves, and we start to pay attention to what is happening in your mind and your body, you can, you can feel the negativity that you feel towards yourself without words, right? And when I'm saying feelings, this is not the feelings that we don't pay attention to, that we don't believe. I'm talking about the sensation, the emotion in the body is, is a felt sense. And when you can feel your posture towards yourself that is negative or uh, degrading or somehow beating yourself up, that is the self-abandonment that continues to perpetuate your issues. Just remember, there are zero reasons to feel shame or guilt or any negativity towards yourself. No amount of negativity has ever been beneficial. Not once, not ever. And I don't know if you've noticed, but in those moments where you beat on yourself, you will feel a stronger propensity towards your coping mechanisms. If you like to have a glass of wine, or you like to have a donut, or you like to get a bag of chips, or you like to go shopping, or you like to play video games, you will feel a stronger propensity towards that coping mechanism because you have been telling yourself untrue thoughts and feelings. You have been sending that negativity towards yourself. You have abandoned, you have been abandoning yourself and you are beating on yourself. So just remember zero amount of negativity or poor self-talk has ever been beneficial. Remember any crappy thought or posture towards yourself that feels bad is untrue. There's a reason why we can feel with our body how aligned or misaligned we are to truth. This is the emotional guidance system that we have been gifted. And it helps us point to or see where we are not free, where you are limiting yourself. The truth is you are free all the time. Whether you acknowledge or believe it is another story. But the truth is at the end of the day, you are free. You have everything you need. You even have the things that you desire that you think you don't have. So start asking yourself some questions. What is it that you want? What is it that you want that you believe you don't have? What is it that you want and why do you want it? How do you think it will make you feel? And then start to notice if you think you need more money to feel safe, then ask yourself, how can I feel safe? right now? 
what is it the what is it that I believe about myself or the world or my environment that is causing me to feel unsafe? How are you already able to receive and be what it is that you desire? We have this belief that we've got some um, far away distant goal that we need to get to and uh, to achieve to receive. But the truth is we are just distancing ourselves from the thing that we desire through that belief. And we're forever putting that issue or that accomplishment or that milestone further and further out, keeping ourselves from the very thing that we can realize right now. So it's really about what do you believe that is separating you from the thing you desire to to be and to feel? right? What do you need? What is it that you need that is not currently being met, right? I really want a loving partnership. I really want to feel supported. I really want to feel safe and cared for and abundant and physically and financially free in every possible way. Well, what is it that's causing me to believe I'm not able to receive that right now? And how am I not giving that to myself? How am I not a loving and supportive partner to myself? How am I abandoning myself by putting my consciousness in the future, in the distant future, in someone else's hands that I've never even met? How can I be that for myself right now? When you bring that love and awareness and compassion inside, self-love can seem very um, intangible. It's like, yeah, but what does that even mean? What if you just said, I'm here for you right now? How would a loving partner treat you? And do you treat yourself that way? How do you show up for yourself? Or how do you abandon yourself in every moment? Remembering that your heart is your conscious connection to the divine. Your heart is your your compass, your, your guidance system, your direct line of access to source guidance, love, provision, all the things. And so when you bring your focus and attention inward towards your heart, you are providing and meeting that need for yourself. And then of course, because as within, so without, it then becomes manifest or material. We seem to think that this external thing has to happen first before I can X, Y, Z, but we got it backwards. (laughs) It actually happens inside first, then it happens outside, right? So hold yourself with compassion. Be there for yourself. Show up for yourself. There's no need to fix. There's no need to fix. There's no need to control. There's no need to manipulate. There's no need to make things happen. It is simply a shift in your perspective and your belief, right? What is a miracle? A miracle is a shift in perspective towards love, right? Set yourself free. You are already free. And the only thing making you feel unfree is your beliefs, is your perspective, right? It can be easy, but do you believe it can be easy? Where's your yeah, but yeah, but I can't because, right? What is it that you want? What do you believe you need to receive to have it, right? What do you believe What do you believe keeps you from having it, right? The divine is asking you, will you allow yourself to receive? Things are happening as far as just a a palpable sense in the energies right now. It feels like we are at the starting line of a a sports car race. (laughs) I don't know how to say that properly, but it feels like we're, we're revving to go, but something's we're just not, we don't have the flag yet, right? That, that all the the cars are lined up at the starting line and the, and the guy's got the checkered flag and he's about ready to, to wave it, but he hasn't done it yet. And it's like, it just kind of feels like, okay, we're ready. We're ready. We're ready. And I feel that this is connecting with the astrology that we've got Saturn and Pluto going direct next month. Um, we have five, four, four or five major outer big planets, relatively speaking, of course, we love Pluto. He's a big heavy hitter um, that are shifting signs next year. And when one of those planets shifts signs, 
there's a palpable change in the air. To have all of these planets shifting signs, the world will not be as it is today, a year from now. It will be drastically different. And it feels to me as though that begins mid to late November, after the 20th-ish, 192021. Partially because of what I know about astrology, but partially just because I can feel it. I, I can feel it in my body. I can feel the excitement, the butterflies. It's like, okay, we got four weeks left. We got four weeks left. Get ready, shift all the stuff internally, remove all of these beliefs and blocks around which you can and can't have. Step into your ability to receive by believing. There isn't anything that you desire that you cannot have as long as it's not from an ego-based consciousness, right? If I need um, the car to feel better about myself so that people value me and think I'm successful, that's an ego-based consciousness desire. If you, if I need my dream home because I'm a Cancer Moon and something about my home and fluffy blankets and soft pillows and 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 sunshine and um, sandy beaches nurtures my soul and it makes me come alive and it makes me a more effective healer and it helps me demonstrate what it looks like to become limitless, that is a divine gift. That is a divine a desire put on your heart to lead you towards your purpose. So really start stepping into what it is, what is it that I desire? What is it that would really light me up? Allow yourself to follow the guidance of the desires of your heart that the divine put there for you as your compass, right? Remembering that your purpose is thriving, right? The tide rises all boats. You elevate the collective whole as you elevate yourself, right? The pace is about to pick up. Things are going about, things are about to happen very quickly and very suddenly. We are moving into a whole new world very fast. Big shifts and changes are coming. So I ask you this, what will you do how will you allow yourself to receive, right? What will you allow yourself to receive? And if there's anything that you desire, but you believe you can't have it, look at that belief and be willing to shift it. That is all I have for you today. I love you, my friends. Make sure you check out Becoming Limitless, the video posted this past week. There'll be so much more content similar to this and in this vein, following our heart is everything. I love you, my friends. Namaste.